hello. Welcome back. The first week of October. It's October 4th. We'll continue with this sequence for maybe another week or two, and then we'll transition into our sort of late fall movements. Um, today, inspired by Insight versus 155 to 156 in the Radiant Sutras. So this is page 166 and 167. Um, this comes in, so within the 21 days of meditation, we're on day four, and the first bit of the sutras, you know, I think sutras one through five, one through four are all about uh, relating to being in relationship with our breath. And I just was threading through the book yesterday, kind of you know, thinking of this class and these insight verses came and I loved it because it's like, a, it's kind of like the beginning of the text begins with that. And the end of the text, like has this like night, nightcap, you know, with, with um, this exploration of the breath and we can layer in a mantra sort of practice with this. So on the inhale is a ha or hum. And that is that downward flow of awareness. So we think of low belly down into your lower chakras, down into the earth is the, is the ha or hum. And that can translate as I am. And then the sa, S-A, is that. And that's, there's other ways to define it, but we'll just go with like I am, I am that. So I am, and then the upward flow is the, the that with the sa, which is your exhale. We'll play with this in the beginning as our sort of, opening breathing meditation arriving and we'll just see about layering this in so really thinking of this practice today as like a, a moving meditation within layering in these sounds this vibration and just being curious like maybe there's something there for you maybe it's like so foreign and like in six months or six years you'll be like oh I want to explore that now and maybe it's today <laughs> maybe it's never and that's okay as well um but just over and over you know as i continue to explore meditation these sort of like ways of connecting uh to what is sort of beyond this this flesh and bone it's like really that natural with, with naturalness with ourselves and going with what like what is true and real, what really feels like what you feel drawn to, not just layering in something that I'm sharing because I've said so, because that's what we're doing today. Like you could be in your own completely different inner adventure. And I like, I, um, I feel like I'm, I'm here to hold space <laughs> for that and to offer invitations, but to really give you an opportunity, right. You've just created the space for yourself to like explore whatever it is you might want to explore whether it's something I invite or something completely different. So just remember that, <laughs> thought I'd share that because that I've been listening in a little bit more to some of the other teachers from our community with instinctive meditation. And that's just the common thread over and over again. You know, you people chime in and they ask questions and it's always about like wanting to do it right. And it's like, there, there's only your right way, you know, and it's such like, it's the inner adventure. It's your own inner adventure. Like I will actually never fully know what is going on for you inside and you for me, right. You could try to explain it all you want. And like, I will probably still never fully get it. And I think that that's an exciting thing. Like, because then it's like, oh, there's nothing wrong. Like there's nothing wrong with this. There's like, if something actually physically does not feel right in these invitations, like trust that. That's all you need to know. That's all you need to do. If something just feels sticky or icky, it's like, let it go and like do the thing that feels the best. So for an example with this, so uh, sa or so hum, you, there's lots of different ways to, to work with these words in different lineages. So hum sa, so hum, or ha sa, <laughs> it's all sort of means the same thing. Um, there is this gal that chimed in and in one of the calls and she was saying something about you know, it just doesn't feel right for me to like relate to the pause at the, the bottom of the inhale. Like I feel really called to be present with the top of the exhale. And she thought it was wrong because that wasn't like the exact invitation that the teacher was offering. And it's like, no, that's not wrong. Just, you just get to go with that and see what's there for you, you know? Okay. That's my spiel. <laughs> now we begin. <laughs> um, so if you want to use the playlist, let's add that playlist. Let's start it now. We'll start seated as we've been doing. Mm 
Maybe also welcoming all these different layers of awareness. Like whatever is true and real for you, whatever is circulating inside of you from what I shared or anything else from your day so far. This is also a good time to kind of set up your space. So if you have a resistance band, you know, we'll use that in this class. If you want any support for your seated shape, if you have a gorgeous ball or anything that you want to use in place of that. So let's begin by just some gentle motion of your neck and your shoulders. So I'm not gonna um, offer much more than that because I want you to be again a little more natural with yourself. Just are there certain ways that you wanna move your neck, your shoulders, your spine before we arrive into more of a still shape for some breath together? Remember, this is more of our upper body and core focused practice. So I'll encourage you just to kind of move and sense and feel into those parts of your body. Go lay down, bud. Go lay down. And if your tongue is not already at the roof of the mouth, let's place the tongue there. So we're breathing in and out of our nose. We'll start to bring in these two sounds, we'll call them. The ha or the hum and the sa. So as you feel called, we'll arrive into more of a still, shape, seated, tall, and upright. Noticing that downward flow, that sense of expansion into low belly, side waist as you inhale with the ha or the hum. The exhale is your sa, S-A. The tension moving up the spine. Tension moving down the spine with the ha or ha. That exhale with the sa. I am. Inhale. That. Exhale. Relating to everything. What? our cells, our atoms, the hydrogen, the oxygen, where that all comes from. I am that. So let's take a full minute here exploring these sounds. You can go silent or you can have a light whisper or singing them out loud to yourself as you Inhale and exhale out of the nose. As you continue, layer in these words, breath flows into this body as a nectar of the gods. 
every breath is a whisper of the goddess. Here is the ritual I ask of you. Be the cup into which I pour this bliss. The elixir of immortal peace. So let's just for a few seconds, enter that space in between the breath. So as you inhale, let's take a subtle pause, enter that space between inhale and exhale. The top of your exhale, or say the bottom of your exhale in between, little pause right before you go to inhale. Hum with the inhale. Saw with your exhale. Is that space in between the breath? Be curious. The space, the peace, the serenity, that pause in between motion. Good. So let's use this practice today. We'll plant this seed A moving meditation. We'll layer in this hum and saw, this downward awareness, lower chakras, feet, earth, all the way up through the crown of the head with those exhales. So let's begin here on your next exhale, if possible, let's lift those arms up into our eye shape reaching out a little bit farther through those fingertips and we'll take a side bend here taking that right arm down reaching up and over through that left arm starting to feel into body a little more here and then let's bring it back upright and we'll shift to the other side same same left arm down right arm reaching over that left ear yeah and then let's bring it all the way back to center okay let's bring our arms out into our y shape turning your thumbs to face back and then we'll take a twist twisting over to that right side that right hand goes behind you left hand to your leg in some way or the floor and push your hands into wherever they're touching to help to twist you a centimeter farther see if you can maintain the shape in your spine and take a breath here the hum and the saw if you want to layer And then lift your arms up into that Y shape. And let's bring the torso back to center. We twist up and over to the other side. So once you find your twist, layer in that awareness of breath with our sounds today. That's it. All the way up into the Y shape. Turning back to center, bring those arms down into your T-shaped palms facing down, and we'll cross that right elbow over your left elbow. Give yourself a hug and squeeze those arms right in toward the chest and drop your elbows down, drop your chin down. That's it. And then let's lift the chin. Let's lift the elbows and take a little upper back bend here. See if you can feel the shoulder blades drawing down the back. That's it. Bring it back to center. Nice job. Good. Bring those arms out into your T-shape. Let's take the elbows and bend them and pull the elbows toward those lower ribs. Yeah. Bring your arms out to the side once again. And we'll take that left elbow on top of the right. Same, same. Give yourself a squeeze. Bring your chin down, elbows down. Take a breath in. As your elbows lift, we exhale, lifting the gaze, feeling those shoulder blades drawing down the breath. One more breath cycle. Good, bring it back to center. If you can hear those birds there saying, good morning. Okay, arms go out to the sides. <laughs> Let's take it all the way up into our eye shape with that side bend. Left arm, go, uh, right arm goes down, left arm up and over that left ear, bring it back to center. So let's just flow 
all the way center side bend other direction. And then we'll come all the way up, arms up into your Y shape. We take that twist and see if we can go sort of one breath, one movement. We exhale, find that twist with our sa. That inhale, we bring it back to center, ha or hum. And that exhale, we twist. Okay, thank you, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> All right, let's bring it back to center. Let's come on to hands and knees from here and continue warming up the spine with some cat cow motion. So go for your extension and flexion. And I also want you to warm up your feet and your wrists here. So shift your body weight forward and back while you're extending and flexing, right? So we bring those shoulders a little bit forward of the wrists at some point. And then curl the toes under and push your bum back toward your heels. And I'm going to aim for you to feel a bit of a stretch in your lower back. So set up your feet and your arms and your spine in a way. And you're flexing that you've sensed that length through the lower spine. And then continue just on your own, your own pace forward and back with that cat cowing. That's it. Good. And then let's shift forward and lower all the way down onto the belly. And take your legs wide and your arms reach forward into your eye shape. Lift your forehead and lift your chest an inch off of the ground. So really subtle. And then lift your arms up into your eye shape. And then we're going to shift them out into your Y shape. And then turn the palms to face down and go out into your T shape with your arms. Good. Then turn your palms to face up and reach your fingertips back toward your heels. And see about sending the shoulder blades down the spine another centimeter and lifting your chest and forehead, maybe another inch off of the ground as long as your back is feeling able to do that in this moment. Just still warming up. And then take a big circle of those arms all the way back forward into your eye shape. Good. Then we're going to slide those forearms back. So our elbows are underneath our shoulders for our sphinx pose. We'll lift up into the sphinx and start to move your head and neck. So I want you to be active in your sphinx like we've been doing, right? Navel aiming to lift away from the ground or that action of maintaining lower belly lifting, shoulder blades down the back, and then start to move your head and neck. Until you aim to feel, we're aiming to feel a bit of a stretch side neck, maybe the front of the throat if you need it. At some point, let the weight of the head drop down. And then notice your breath again. I love the idea. If you relate to the word prayer, some of us do, some of us don't. I understand that. But breath as a prayer of some sort, a calling out, a connection with the environment, all that we are made of, all that surrounds us. I am that. Good. Let's lift off of the thighs. So we curl those tons of toes under, lift off of the thighs. We're in a forearm plank with our knees down. And then I just want you to start to rotate through your lower back and your pelvis. So we take a little twist of our right hip to the right side, left hip to the left, left side. So we get a little rotation through the lower spine as we stay nice and steady through the upper spine. Knees are down. We have that strong push away from the floor, forearms and elbows. Good. And then find the center with your hips. We're going to shift the knees forward, plant the palms down and lift your elbows away from the floor together. Arrive into your tabletop position and take a cat cow motion here all the way tailbone through the crown of the head. And then as your bum tucks under, I want you to shift your bum back toward your heels with the tops of your feet down. Yeah, and keep your arms stretching long and let the weight of the head drop. Excellent, let's slide those hands toward your knees. We're gonna curl the toes under 
and we're going to arrive into our squat pose from here. So if possible, toes facing forward, you may want to start a little bit more lifted than maybe, you know, you can go eventually once you're a little warmer toes facing forward, heels are down Forearms either on the thighs or in between those legs. We're going to take three breath cycles in this squat. Same invitation throughout the practice. If you choose to take it, those different layers with the breath. That's it. Excellent. Let's push down into those feet. Your next exhale, we're going to rise up to stand in a big reach up through those arms. Ooh, relief. Big reach, big reach. And then we let those arms swing down to the sides. Let's add the layer lifting off of our heels. So we lift off of those heels, reach up through those arms, engage into the body, squeeze, 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 strong, strong, strong. And then let all of that tension as much as possible release, especially from the shoulders and the chest. Yeah, there we go. Let's do it one more time. Big reach. Hold, but don't hold the breath. And then release. Good. Take your legs a little wider. We're going to go with our twisting here, arms out into your T-shape and move from the ribs. Move from that momentum of your arms swinging around the body. And I'm going to encourage you today to go a little bit more vigorous if that feels appropriate for your spine. So a little bit faster, big full body warm up, shake out those hands, especially for your wrists. When you were on your wrists, they were feeling a little, a little extra feely. Give a shake out to those hands, open and close the hands a couple times. A couple more seconds, big motion, arms, spine, there we go, ribs, hips, knees, feet, and then good, let's find the center, nice job. Good, let's look down at the toes. So let's see if we can practice today for the most part with our toes facing forward as we come down into the squat. So let's start that, lowering down into our squat. Remember how to get down hands and knees. So you can use your hands or not, right? To get into our tabletop position. We arrive into a plank shape. So let's find the plank, knees lifted. And for this first one together, let's lower the knees down and we'll take slow five push ups. And it's interesting. Not always a part of the exercise world, but to add this layer. <laughs> intention of awareness with our breath. Can a push up be a moving meditation? How is that for you? Is that possible to layer in a couple different awarenesses inside of these stronger shapes? Good. Last time we're going to lower all the way down to the belly. We're going to practice similar today, legs wide arms out into our eye shape, chest and forehead lift, option to lift your legs as well now. Take your arms up a little higher out into your Y shape, turn your thumbs to face back. Good, go arms out into your T shape, palms facing down, point through those toes. Turn your palms to face up, reach your fingertips toward your heels, see if that reach can lift your chest an inch higher without compromising your lower back. Circle your arms all the way forward. Keep them high. Find your sphinx pose. Sphinx pose into your knees down forearm plank. Knees down forearm plank. We take that right hip and sink it over to the right side. Let's take a side plank on our right side, lifting this left leg up, keeping your right knee down. Left arm up, reaching out through those left toes. Good. Lower those left toes down, rotate your chest down, left forearm comes down and open over to the other side. So we take that left shin, pivot it behind, open into your side plank, left side, right leg is lifted, right arm is lifted, point through those right toes. Breath here. That's it. Rotate through the upper body. 
and then middle body, lower body, we're in our knees down forearm plank option to keep the knees down or now we lift those knees, squeeze the inner thighs together and maintain here, five breath cycles. Feel free to add a little pulse, a little bounce, a little dance to this shape. You don't have to stay completely static or still. Whatever's gonna help you to maintain, have a little fun, feel the challenge, but feel maybe a little bit of playfulness inside you of this shape. I like to add those little bounces. If you have the music going, you could play with the music here. <laughs> yeah. Good. All right. Knees down, palms down. We're trying to lift those elbows away from the ground together. Take a cat cow. So tabletop, cat cow, nice and slow. Feel that articulation through your spine. That's it. We shift back into our squat. So that transition, how are you getting into the squat with control? We rise up to stand from the squat straight up. Those arms lift into our eye. Lift off of your heels this time, big reach. Let loose heels, arms swing down. Lift your arms into your Y shape. We squat down, same, same. Arriving into your tabletop position, similar way as you've been doing, as you've been practicing. Tabletop to your knees down or knees lifted plank, three push-ups now. Flowing at your own pace here. Remember, we're trying to work with that full range of motion. So wherever your hands need to be, your bum needs to be, so you can get your chest and forehead close to the floor without dipping your head down. Try to keep your neck in line with the rest of your spine. Yeah. There we go. Last time we lower all the way to the front. Same, same legs wide, toes pointing out, toes pointing away from the bum. Option to lift your legs. We lift those arms into our eye, hold. Good, arms out into your Y. And those arms lift a centimeter higher as those arms go out into your T. Palms face up, reach those fingertips toward those heels. We hold here two breath cycles. Feel free to move your neck here if you need. Good. Circle those arms all the way forwards. Find your sphinx. Enjoy that back bend for a couple extra breaths. When you're ready, we're shifting into our forearm plank. Knees down or knees lifted. Find your side plank, right side. Rotate through lower back, middle back, then upper back. Lift that top arm. Now rotate through the upper back first. There we go. Back to center, side plank, left side, mindful of that transition. Find the shape, nose breath. Can we still have that awareness up and down the spine with our sound? Good, trying that transition center. Knees down, palms down. Elbows lift, tabletop to your cat cow. Got it. One more time here, squat. We stand, take it slow. Feel as much sense of stretch through your spine as you need. Before you rise up into your squat, we take that big reach, release down, heels, arms. Take those arms into your Y. We squat down, nice job. Tabletop, three push-ups your way. A 
as you lower down. Last time, legs wide, arms into your eye. Let's flow through it, arms into your Y, arms into your T, fingertips reach back, palms face up, holds right here. Spread your fingers, squeeze your toes, reach those fingertips farther back, feel that engagement back body and cycle back into the awareness of your breath. Circle those arms forward, find your sphinx, sphinx to that forearm plank. And let's flow through it here, side plank, right side. That strong push from the shoulder out into that elbow, out into your fist or palm. You got it. Center. Still mindful of that transition, left side, side plank. Find the center, nice job. Knees down, palms down, lift those elbows. Take your cat cow into a child's pose or downward facing dog. We have five breaths. Interesting within this inverted pose, downward facing dog, or even child's pose with the forehead right closer to the floor, back body exposed. How we can sense the breath, the vibration, the sounds kind of moving inside of us, inside of these different shapes, how it might change and shift our attention, our awareness. What's easy to pay attention to, delightful, joyful, interesting, inside of motion, inside of these invitations today. Good. We're going to take our legs wide now. I want you to turn your toes out. So if you're not in a downward facing dog, you might start there. Legs wide, toes turned out. We're going into a deep squat with our heels down if possible once again. This time those arms are gonna come inside the legs. We're gonna press that right arm inside the right leg and take that left arm and rotate open. We take this twist and then let's go center. Left arm inside or on top of that left leg, push the leg and the arm together and we rotate open. Good, one more time on each side. So then got top arms in your Y shape, bottom arm reaching in opposition. That's it. One more time. Left side. That's it. Good, bring it back to center, nice job. Lift the bum, turn your toes forward. Walk it out, downward facing dog into your plank. No rush, take your time. Find each shape, find the down dog. We find the plank, arms straight, legs straight if possible. Legs are close together. We're gonna lift this right leg up and take a little back bend through the lower spines. We try to lift that leg up as high as possible without hurting ourselves. And then we're gonna bend that right knee, bring the thigh up toward the chest and really curl through your lower back and hug in your lower core muscles. Pause right here. And then I want you to do that two more times. Extend the leg. Notice your pelvis doing the opposite shape. We take a little back bend through the lower spine and then find that opposite motion in your lower spine. Round, round, round. Hug that thigh in, pause for a second, and then take it again. Moving to more awareness of our core here. Front and back, especially that front and right lower core. Engage, contracted to bring that knee closer. My leg extends back out. Feel free to play with your wrists here. We're gonna shift right into the other side. Left leg lifts. We take it slow, knee to chest. Leg extends out. Let that leg lift a little higher. 
And then again, bring it in and pause and hold and squeeze into that shape. Layer in your breath. Exhale as you pull that knee in. You got it. Good. Leg extends out, knees down, Ooh, forearms down. Have a moment. Rest those shoulders. Rest the head. It could be a child's pose. It could be resting on your belly. We're just letting those shoulders rest for a couple seconds. Try to stay with your nose breath. You got it. Good. Forearms are going to slide forward. We're going to hang out in our side plank on our right side a little bit longer. So I want you to shift into your side plank right side. Your way. Yeah, your side plank you can maintain for a little longer than we've been doing. And we're just going to see if we can dip this right side body, right hip down an inch or two, and then pulse it back up. So now we're connecting to side core muscles. So we did a little bit of the front and the back. I want you to place your hips, place your spine, your shoulder, everything. So it's like, okay, I really feel this side waist lighting up. Sometimes we have to play with the shape until we can really feel that happening. So it doesn't necessarily have to look like mine. It doesn't have to be perfectly side planks. Just like, where do I set myself up? So when I'm dipping that right hip down, it's like, oh, side waist is firing up. There's lots of heat there. <laughs> yeah, good. Find the center. Let's try it on the other side. So for a little bit, right, it could just be that exploration of how to set up so when we're dipping and lifting back up, again, there's a sense of heat, a sense of fatigue, a sense of stretch and contraction in that left side waist. Tiny little dip down, back up. Excellent, we find the center forearm plank. Okay. I'm going to watch my clock. I promise. We're going to try for 45 seconds in our forearm plank. Knees down are lifted. The most challenging or the most easy, right? I just want you to be able to try to maintain a little bit more of a challenging shape for a little bit longer than we're used to. 45 seconds. Remember, you don't have to be static. You don't have to be grumpy. <laughs> you don't have to have a frown on your face. We can add a little bounce, a little wiggle, a little dance, a little shifting of our body weight forward and back to bring a little bit of lightness, a little playfulness to some of this motion we bring into our body to layer in the strength. Feel strong today to remember that throughout the week. You got it. I'm right there with you. Haven't been doing these for as long. So like after 30 seconds, like, oh, all right. Five, four, three, two, one. Take a rest. Sphinx, child's pose, lay on your belly. Oh, feel that type of aliveness in your body. The release afterwards. How amazing that can be. Mm -hmm. God, I want you to take it into a cobra pose or upward facing dog from here. We're going to shift back into that wide squat. Toes pointing out, knees pointing out, heels down. Right arm inside or on top of that right leg, slow twist, ribs, left arm opens up. Back to center, other side. And that rotation, rib cage, upper back especially, use that push of arm and leg together to support that. You got it, back to center. Lift your bum, turn your toes forward. We're gonna rise up to stand, squat to stand, take an upper or whole spine, we'll say, back bend. So I want you to tuck your bum, 
Shift your pelvis forward, pull the arms up into the eye and then pull those arms back. Engage your bum. Feel the back body engaging, lift the chin, strong in the back to open here in the front. Few more seconds, just enough length, just enough back bend. And then good, let those arms swing down. But swing those arms out in front of the body. And we're going to lower down onto our bums. Remember what you've been weaving in, how you've been playing with getting down to your bum with a little bit more control or just a little more novelty, right? So I want you to find that. I want you to practice two times, coming all the way down to your bum with control. And you can use your hands to do that, right? And I'm, again, encouraging kind of the same shape to play with throughout this early fall sequence, yeah? Once you're on your bum, I want you to scoot your bum forward to the middle of your mat if you aren't already. And we're gonna take our resistance band, if you have it, around the feet. So playing with our core a little bit here, so a little bit of a counter from all that we've just done, and we're gonna take our slow roll downs so you take that band close to your feet, tug back on your band, and then start to roll down one segment at a time. So we're gonna take this slow and controlled, that band supporting that sense, lower back touching the floor first and even adding a subtle pause like we did with our breath. Finding that space, that moment to be connected, middle back, feeling into upper back, eventually head on the ground. And then do the reverse awareness, chin to the chest, that upper back lifts. So we really feel middle back and lower back pressing into the ground. Then can we just lift off that middle back? And then the lower back, it doesn't have to be perfect, just something like that. We curl all the way forward. I want you to reach your hands closer to your feet are all the way to your feet and gentle tug of your spine forward into that seated forward bend. Take a breath into your lower back here. Good, sit tall and upright. Another two times, I want you to take it at your own pace not dismissing certain parts of your spine, trying to be very connected to aware of sensation, back body and the floor. Taking that pause in between, that space in between motion like our breath. And then we continue. Enjoy a second or two in that stretch forward before you do your last round. We're gonna stay seated together at the top. Good, so as you fold forward again, enjoy that stretch, spine reaching those arms forward, chest down, again, knees can be bent here, soft. Good. We're going to bend our knees deeply together and sit tall and upright here through the spine. I want you to take that band now into both of your hands. So this is new this week. So band, sorry, both ends of the band into your left hand. That's what I meant. <laughs> and then take that right hand underneath the left hand and we're going to take a rotation. So you're going to rotate your ribs to the left. And I want you to tug that band over to the left side and think of poking that left elbow behind your hip and toward the floor. And maybe we're trying to aim for a little bit of engagement, awareness, contraction in that left side body again. And then we bring it back to center. 
We're gonna stay on this left side, adding more tension, more intensity, right? We take that band lower. If you need it, if you want it, I want you to squeeze your thighs together and we twist. Ribs to the left, left elbow behind that hip and toward the floor and then find the center. It's kind of that similar, like subtle motion of the hip dropping down and back up in your side plank, right? We're tugging strong, subtle rotation until hopefully we feel some contraction side waist and then back to center. Good, we go three times on the other side. <clears throat> so right hand on top, left hand below, squeeze thighs together, rotate. Hold that engagement a few seconds. So you really feel what's going on with the sideways before you come back to center, rotate. So hips are facing forward, right? We're trying to take that rotation, rib cage, upper back. Last time here for me, could be moving a little slower, faster, no problem. Good. We find the center. Take your band closer to your feet once again. We're gonna take our five rows. We're gonna hold that engagement in the upper and middle back. Roscoe's very involved today. Hey, Roscoe, I know I love you too. <laughs> so we're gonna hug those elbows into the side waist. We're gonna sit tall and upright, awareness of where your neck is in space and then let those arms straighten out in front of you and let your shoulder blades come away from the spine, even like puff up into that upper back and middle back a little bit. And then I want you to find the opposite, less puff, more engagement around like underneath those armpits, middle back, hold that engagement. Don't hold your breath. Good, straighten those arms. We have three more times. Think of this as some of the countering to all of the pushing and like holding ourselves away from the floor. This is a motion that I would encourage to take two or three times a week, right? So there's a couple strength practices in the library that where it's just kind of upper body focus. I just uploaded a new one as well. It kind of includes this sort of rowing position. This is great for posture. And just great for back health, back strength. One more time, we hold. And because it's just, you know, the resistance band, most of you can hold a lot more weight than this. You kind of hold the band. If you hold the tension, like more time under tension is adding to those strength adaptations over time. So we hold, maintain, you get a little fatigue, feel a little more blood flow through the back. Yeah, and then we let that release. Nice job, nice job, good. Let's release that band. And we're gonna take it really slow and gentle to start into a twist. So truly, truly, let's start slow, hands behind you, knees bent, feet wide. And I want you to just drop your knees over to the left side. Keep your hands behind you. So have this be more of a hip and lower back twist and then back to center and over to the other side. And I know you know where we're going, right? Not bigger rotation. So as you feel ready, feel free to start to lift off of that back hand, right? And we twist toward the hand that's behind you on the floor. And you just keep going side to side. Knees shift, spine twists. We reach top arm toward that bottom hand, flowing side to side. As you continue, think of pushing your legs into the ground in those 90 degree angles as the spine takes that twist. I'm gonna finish here, right side, right leg, knees shifting to the right, legs pressing into the ground, left arm reaching toward right hand. Good, then we spin all the way back to center. We're gonna take our gorgeous ball behind, 
before we do that, if you're using the playlist, skip ahead two songs, please. Started this class a little late. I want the playlist to be a little more synced up with us. So gorgeous ball is behind you. We're going to have that gorgeous ball right in between the shoulder blades. Keep your knees bent as you lay down over that ball, hands behind your head. We're going to circle our upper spine around that ball. So let's start by taking that back bend over the ball. Keep your elbows a little closer together for this right now. And then we're going to lift and rotate our right elbow toward our right knee and then curl up over that ball like you're taking a little crunch left elbow dips down toward that left knee and then back bend over your ball so kind of sense how this is a bit of a trying to circle the upper body around that ball and that ball or your rolled up towel or pillow kind of helping to facilitate that easy flowing motion that we might be able to take just a little bit more simply a little more like in a sense of flow if we didn't have that prop if you don't have a prop know that you can do this without it start to go the opposite direction if you haven't already Remember, this does not have to look like mine. Explore sensation rather than like a perfect picture of a circle. What feels good? Around the ribs, chest, upper back, elbow position as we're taking some motion around that ball. Eventually, we're going to land into an, a back bend over your ball. So you might need to change where that ball is living underneath you. how inflated or deflated that ball is. And then we're going to rest into this shape. Knees can be bent. Those legs can start to extend out in front of you. Now Jai is coming in for hello. I think everyone just wants to be a part of our practice. All the motorcycles, all the crows, all the blue jays, all the hummingbirds, <laughs> all the dogs. It's a blessing. We're being blessed today, extra blessed today with all the, the beings. <laughs> As we rest into this shape, I'm going to continue with our sutra this further exploration invitation here here is the ritual i ask of you be the cup into which i pour this bliss the elixir of immortal peace the breath flows out with the sound saw the breath flows in with the sound, ha. Thus thousands of times a day, everyone who breathes is adoring the goddess, right? The goddess, the primal life force, the essence, the energy of all of life. Adoring it, praying to it, savoring it, connecting know this and be in great joy listen to the ongoing prayer that is breath life shall dance in you a dance of ever renewing delight a dance of ever renewing delight this breath
Feel that prop underneath you. And let's slide that prop out to the side for now. So upper back on the ground, let's hug the knees into your chest towards a happy baby pose, similar shape that we were doing with that wide squat, right? knees turned out, toes turned out. Good. And let's bring those feet down to the ground, toes facing forward. We're going to lift up into a bridge pose today. Lifting up into the bridge. Let's interlace our fingers underneath us. We haven't done this variation in a while here in these classes. So we think of kind of rolling those shoulders underneath the upper back so we can reach for a clasp of those hands. It's okay if that doesn't work for your body, you can find an arm shape that does. Gentle lift of the bum up. Neck neutral. Chin reaching toward the chest slightly. Reaching those arms, pressing those arms into the ground. Hold here. Gentle nose breath. Once again, let's notice that tongue position. Tongue resting at the roof of the mouth behind the top row of teeth, a light touch of the tongue there. A non-grasping attitude of attention, a light holding of our attention on this Sound once again, layering back in the slow hum and a luxurious sigh. Uh, slowly release that interlace. I want you to push your palms up toward the ceiling or sky here. So now we feel this sort of flexion rounding through the upper back and then take it slow one segment of our spine at a time rolling down arms go out into your T shape palms facing up take your thighs together let your body rest in this shape a few seconds Right arm lifts. Remember this twist. We're going to try not to lift off of the hips. So it's just this rotation of the ribs. We're lifting off of the head, reaching that right arm toward the left fingertips, knees squeezing together. And good. Find slowly the center. Pause in the center. Let's embrace that sense of space here in the center in between your breath cycles. One twist to the left. Left arm reaches, head lifts, legs squeeze together. Reach, reach, reach. Back to the center. Notice sensation, upper back, back of the arms on the floor. 
without that changing gentle drop of the knees to the right. They may not be able to drop very far if we're maintaining connection, upper back arms to the floor. Find the center with the knees. And try the other side, knees drifting over to the left. Nothing changes, upper spine, arms, head. All right, let's find the center. Walk your feet closer to your bum. Let's cross our left ankle over our right ankle, or excuse me, left ankle over right thigh for our figure four stretch. Or any stretch that you want to do for the lower body, your hips, before we take our rest today. So I'll let you know when to shift sides. So enjoy whatever stretch you're <laughs> doing right now for side one. Let's shift the side too, if you haven't already. We're going to move into our final stretches and then into final shape for today. I'll begin this transition into this time and then leave you be for a few minutes and call you back. Before we add in that, those sounds, these vibrations, another time, I just want you to drift your attention up and down your spine. Tailbone, you could again layer in the legs, the feet down into the earth, or just keep it in your body. That exhale, awareness traveling up the spine, crown of the head out into sky. So earth to sky or tailbone to crown of the head, you know, body or expand the attention farther out. Once you've had that, just go in with an experimental mindset. Two minutes. The hum and the saw. Or you could use the English, the I am and the that. Inhale, I am, ha or hum. The exhale, upward motion, sa.
Another subtle breath, nose breath. Enjoyable breath, easy breath. Breath flows in into this body as a nectar of the gods. Every breath is a whisper of the goddess. Here is the ritual I ask of you. Be the cup into which I pour this bliss the elixir of immortal peace. Listen to the ongoing prayer that is breath. Life shall dance in you a dance of ever renewing delight. So for the last few breaths, this idea of kind of like receiving, being the vessel, being the cup, not trying so hard, just the practice of receiving this air, this nectar, this substance, these elements that feed us and keep us here. As if you were drawing closer, the benefits, the after effects of these movements, this practice today. Appreciation for your own aliveness and this body that gives you the opportunity to experience all that you have in a lifetime so far. That acceptance, that embrace of all of it. And we'll come back. Whatever shape you feel like ending your practice in today. And if you went a little far out, you can kind of sense that, make sure 
you feel integrated before any next conversations or happenings in the day, water, journaling, even just like some light touch, some gentle stretches to integrate every, every and all the things that were transpiring. Hey, hey, hey. Perfect timing, guys. <laughs> now the world is telling us, okay, it's time to move on to the rest of the day. <laughs> hmm. Thank you so much for being here live. Those of you here and those of you tuning in later, we appreciate you all.